Thank you. So I would like to begin my remarks this evening by briefly rebutting the idea that when we're talking about the free and free love, we are somehow talking about the associated financial costs of such things. Sure, that might have made sense back, say, the 17th century, maybe 18th century if we're a little generous. But one of the sort of funny things about the 20th century is that global capitalism happened. The fact that I, can, the fact that I am continuing to breathe right now costs money. And if we define the free in free love as not costing anything, then we're working off a definition which is trivial at best, silly and worst, and not really worth our time. But before I, I fully begin my remarks and argue that free love is in fact love and is therefore inherently freeing, and by free, freeing, I mean liberating in a sense that allows somebody to sort of come into their own and join mutually with another person, even if for a brief moment, and to create meaning rather than simply not incurring a financial cost. Mr. Dover, we, do, we in the opposition do not believe that freedom is in some sort of li lily-livered, hippie, Sartrean existentialist sense, a sort of unobstructed, unrestrained thing. And I, this might just be because I'm a literature major and read far too many existentialists far too much of the time. I, I believe it was Martin Heidegger who argued that freedom comes inherently from being placed into the world and being inherently constrained within the framework of that world. And I wouldn't necessarily characterize Mr. Heidegger as a sort of lily-livered leftist hippie, but I might just not have been reading the right things. So to sort of begin the substance of my argument, I would like to argue that free love is, in a way, perhaps the most pure form of love that exists in the context of human experience and therefore creates a certain sort of meaning for certain people in certain circumstances that perhaps they wouldn't necessarily get in the course of a relationship. And I want to sort of open with a, with a little bit of a quote. Um, uh, I apologize, it's going to be a Catholic. I know I'm speaking to an aud audience largely of British expats, but I, su I suppose I could quote from the Anglican Church's great founder, the good King Henry VIII, and sort of make an argument for free love on the same basis, perhaps, with, perhaps by virtue of experience rather than virtue of intellectual content. So, <laughs> Fa Father Joseph Tishner, in 1972, wrote an essay on existentialism and phenomenology, in which he talked about love for a paragraph. And he said in the, in the course of this paragraph, the possibilities of realizing love allowed by the concrete world of human environment are poorer than love. The first of its enemies is time. For it, stri it meaning love, strives towards the eternal now. The other enemy is space. For love strives towards ceaseless with. I find this a profoundly moving and profoundly true understanding of what love is, and I think it supports the claim that free love can create meaning in a very pure and very meaningful sense for people. And I think this is borne out by human experience in other realms, things that we love, like literature. And I would be hesitant to say that I somehow have a more meaningful connection necessarily with Tim LaHaye's 400-page Left Behind novel than I do with Dostoevsky's 100-page Notes from Underground, simply because the Christian fundamentalist novel written by Mr. LaHaye happens to be four times the length. I think meaning comes from different things in different circumstances and is not necessarily linked to overall duration of commitment in the way that the proposition is asserting. So, with and now, understanding love in the circumstance allows us to see that there is something very present about love, something very momentary, very fleeting, but in that singularity of moment allows the production of something almost transcendentally or spiritually meaningful. For emphasizing the present, the now, the with, we abandon not to the blasé freedom of lack of obstruction or lack of restraint, but we abandon our 
almost sort of historical bounds. We abandon the past and we abandon the future to that one moment wherein we lose ourselves to the thralls of passion in sexual acts or otherwise. And we, we lose ourselves to the mutuality of that expression of love. And we lose our past and our future to the immediacy of feeling in the now. And by that understanding, I think it is simply nonsense to argue that free love isn't love. In fact, free love might be the most freeing form of love that can possibly exist. And insofar as free love is, is love, it is there, therefore liberating because it allows people to abandon their cares, abandon their historical presence to the, this sort of moment of feeling, this moment of expression, this moment wherein the meeting they might have in the next week or the problems they had with their car the prior day simply don't matter because the only thing that matters is that present moment. We in this body, and certainly we in the opposition, need not bow before the altar of our historical, our old, our dead understandings of necessary marital commitment or commitment as being necessary to meaning. The 20th century showed us how to get past that and past it, I believe we are. Thank you. <laughs>